I think one of the greatest things about uh, Spartan racing is that there is no one way to train for it. I run a lot. I run about six, sometimes seven days a week. The majority of my training is running because I absolutely love to run. I run every morning anywhere between 9 to 13 miles. I'll do two to three days in the mountains and two days in the gym and at least one day of high intensity if not two. We want to change 100 million lives. Let's go talk to some people and let's see, are we creating at Spartan the impact we want to create? Let's go. NAD is the molecule in every cell in our body, nearly every function the body performs. Sometimes between 30 and 40 years old, our NAD levels get cut in half. And so here we are asking this molecule to do all this work. We have half as much. Seems logical to me to supplement with it. Qualia's form of NAD has other supporting ingredients in it. The company takes this stuff seriously. The company's done two double-blind studies on NAD. 67% increase in NAD levels when a company goes out and spends the money and takes the time to do a study and see the results, that's refreshing, that's nice, because otherwise how do we know? Are we just spending money on some snake oil? You're hearing it from a Flintstone, you're hearing it from a guy that had a really tough time believing in all this, and I feel better, I want to live longer, try it, you'll see it right away. Let's put this on. All right, so you're connected now, and let's go ahead and start running. Once you're at the elite athlete level, you're at the top of the game. I mean, you have to really fine tune your performance to optimize every little bit of training, nutrition, especially as you get a little bit older. You know, I'm in my mid 30s now. I'm not, you know, 20. I'm not recovering like I used to. So coming in here, you know, one of the things I never focused on before is what your body's doing and how efficient you are at processing calories, glycogen, burning your fat versus your glycogen stores and where you know that crossover is and where your thresholds are for the, the pace you can maintain for a certain distance, two to three hours of racing is usually about Spartan race and how much calories you need to either pre-consume and load up beforehand or bring with you while you're racing. Can you take a big deep breath in and out for me? All right, that's moving perfectly. Today, the test that we were responsible for was the VO2 max test which is basically a test of aerobic fitness. Everything feel okay? So if we wanted to predict aptitude for success in an endurance event, this is probably the test they use the most. Get up there, get up there, get up there. Come on, push, 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 push. Come on, big. 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 She did an excellent job, so she scored a 69. So 69? Yeah, I have yep. the test. Per kilogram per minute. And for her age and gender, a 49 is considered excellent. For example, an Olympic triathlete, we've seen a score of about a 67. 69, that's pretty incredible, actually. Just another day in the office. <laughs> it's a very complete sport, so you need to have a very good capacity of, for endurance but you need to have a very good outstanding power output and strength as well. Two minutes and 45 seconds, doing great, doing great. The very complete athletes on a scale from zero to 10, they would probably not be a 10 in any sport, but they're eight at everything. So for example, you looked at a, a marathon runner, they're very good obviously in endurance, that's a 10, but when it comes to sprint or power output or strength, that might be a two or a three. Uh, if you can compare, for example, to a football player, when it comes to strength and power, it might be a 10. When it comes to endurance or metabolic efficiency, it might be a 1 or a 2. Some athletes are very specific in one sport. It's very difficult to be good at the rest. What uh, athletes like Robert have is an incredible ability that while not, they're not the best at anything compared to other athletes, they're like uh, very good at everything. Good job! The athletes like Robert are probably the most versatile athletes you can ever find. Good job, Robert, very good. I've seen Olympic athletes get soul crushed at Spartan races. They either don't even finish in the top 50, or they don't finish at all. Being able to run in a straight line at 130 pounds, I'm sorry, but I'm not gonna put you in the category of the world's greatest. I know you just won the Boston Marathon or the New York Marathon, it's not gonna cut it. I'd say that DOSR athletes are arguably the greatest athletes on the planet, man. Oh, yeah. oh, take you to the rodeo.
the thing that I think people need to notice is like, if you want to be a CrossFit Games athlete, you want to be a, a Spartan obstacle racing champion, you want to go to the Olympics, uh, it means wake up at four, work until eight, eat food, take a nap, work from 12 till two, take another nap, eat some more food, and then work from like four till six. It's a job. I think one of the greatest things about uh, Spartan racing is that there is no one way to train for it. And it's part of it is trying to figure out the great combinations to every day try and figure out how can I improve and what are my weaknesses. I run a lot. I run about six, sometimes seven days a week. The majority of my training is running because I absolutely love to run. I run every morning anywhere between 9 to 13 miles. I usually get about 70 to 80 miles a week. On longer training cycles, I'll do two to three days in the mountains and two days in the gym and at least one day of high intensity, if not two. I love to go to my dad's shop and we just have some more functional things to work with, just like tires and sledgehammers and things like that. I rock climb six days a week. And then bouldering because I really enjoy bouldering as well. I know that our sport's all about taking down mountains, but I build my mountains in the gym, and then I take it out and I race it on the course. In the afternoons, I usually do OCR-specific things like strength circuits or heavy carry circuits. Cross-country skiing is one way how do I train, but maybe one not so common way is uh, that I do also dancing. It's perfect for coordination. It's kind of life or part of life, but uh, you can also say dancing is a training. Training now is just a part of life. Totally integrated into my lifestyle now. If I quit training, then I'm just a total lost soul and don't even know what I'm doing with myself. We are a different tier and we are a different kind of creature. There you go. There's one event everybody has their focus on, and that's Tahoe. Hey, boys, the top obstacle course racer in the whole wide world. Say hello. Uh, Come on the kids race tomorrow. What? Come on the kids race. The restaurant. Yeah. Awesome. The energy here is unlike any obstacle course race in the world. I mean, you have literally the best competition in the entire world at this one race. This is this is the world championships. Like this is it. New York Marathon's easy. There's a marathon in New York, right? There's not 12 of them. There's one. I'm 95% sure it's my last Spartan. I'm, this is the race I've focused my training on. Hobie, he's the reason a lot of us got into the sport. He's the godfather of obstacle course racing, essentially. Like, you know, he was the first professional athlete that everyone was out to beat. Yo, Hobie. This is it, you know, this is the one. And I was just so excited and let's just do this thing. What's gonna be carnage? Uh, twister, flip Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was thinking the swim was gonna be carnage, but yeah. It's, gonna be it's all gonna be carnage. So the women's race right now, you see them lining up, getting ready to start. Going into this race, I mean, the women's field is stacked this year. Zuzana is the defending champion two years in a row, so she's got, you know, tons of eyes on her back. We don't see her a lot. We don't race against her because she's in Europe, and so it's always that wild card, and I think it's like, can somebody take her down? My first victory was in 2015. I didn't know what to expect, so I wanted to be in the first five. Everybody asked, was it just one good day for her last year, or is it her normal shape? She's definitely kind of like a, a fierce competitor that I'm not sure what her strengths are, probably everything. <laughs> the World Championships from Lake Tahoe, California, start right now. That moment has come, but you just got to sit there, close your eyes for a second, and take it in, because it's about to be on. And there's nothing more exciting than just trusting in all that training and the things you've been doing and just to go and, and run your own race and, and put it all out there.